Ladies and gentlemen, please meet Christine Keeler. <laughs> you know each other, you met on the film. We yes. met briefly on the set, didn't we? Yes. You, you were an advisor on the film, Christine. Um, well, I actually uh, worked with a writer to begin years ago. <laughs> and do you recognise that moment in the film? Do you remember that moment more than mm. 25 years ago? Yes, I do. I do indeed, and I think that is when probably I was rushed out of the court at that moment, and uh, of course I was crying still. And I think the general public outside saw me coming out crying, and then everybody um, started screaming and shouting at me. And did you recognise the relationship that, that John Hurt and I were talking about there? Is that an accurate description, that it was between you and Stephen Ward, a platonic relationship, which, which actually was founded on the fact that you each had what the other wanted? It was a platonic relationship. I think I looked at Stephen more as a father figure, and I, I suppose Stephen ruled my life in many ways because I respected him and relied on him as a father figure. You were 18 at the time, weren't you? Around about that age, 18, 19, 20. When I was 17, when I met Stephen, and went to live with Stephen to start with. Yes. How old was he? I think he was about 46 at the time. Was he? And um, I think an awful lot of people would say to you, or want to say to you, or perhaps are thinking now, you know, it's more than 25 years on, we know John's reasons for doing the film, and he felt it was the right film to do, and he said that he <coughs> felt a certain compassion for the character, but why did you want to go through all this again and help it? Why did you want to encourage renewed interest? Well, because the interest that's taken place over the 26 years since it happened has been the wrong sort of interest. It's been the interest of morals, my morals, you know, because Stephen is dead after all, and... Uh, it wasn't correct years ago that Stephen was a ponce or that I indeed was a prostitute. So I thought that the only way to stop the rumours and the further rumours that and stories that would have been made and are <laughs> have been made but, was but, to come up with the truth. But then we have the moral argument all over again. Not at all, because I think that now that the truth has been made and, and the truth is, is now at last here with my book and with this film as well. I think that now will be the end of any more rumour. Do you? Do you I think it so. will be, John Hurt? I hope so. I hope it'll clear a great deal up. But what do you say to the people who say that the film should never have been made? That, And I think they say it on the whole, don't they? Because they think that John Profumo and his family have suffered enough. Well, yes. I mean, uh, I've had people say that uh, it shouldn't be made after all. John Profumo is still alive. And I say, well, that is precisely the point. Stephen Ward isn't. And also, for Profumo's sake, because the way that the press uh, have deteriorated the story as the years go by, uh, the story has got worse and worse and more and more deteriorated and but more lies. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the truth must come out. And it, also in my book, to put an end to the rumour. I mean, after all, every few months, the press would have me in the paper, Vice Queen, uh, just uh, about something that happened 26 years ago that wasn't correct. But you're not seriously and suggesting that bringing out a film and uh, writing your book in any way helps John Profumo to do I it. am indeed, yes, because I didn't want to go in the newspaper being called the Vice Queen as I'm bringing up my family. I mean, I would read the paper and read Vice Queen every few months. And of course, John uh, Perfumo was hurt by association with myself. So not only was I the one that was having the shame, I was also having the blame. You, so, you, you said since, though, that you regretted betraying him, as you put it. We betrayed each other when probably we should have stuck by each other. But. Um, we betrayed each other at... Uh, I betrayed Stephen uh, because um, I felt that he was responsible for the situation that I found myself in, having to go to court. And also, um, I betrayed him 
uh, about what he, he was actually up to. When you say when we betrayed each other, no. you mean you and Stephen, not you and John Perfumer? Stephen and I betrayed oh, each oh, other. Oh, I see, you were talking about yes. John Perfumer. Yes. I've... Well, yes, I, I, I regret that when the press caught up with me in Spain and he had denied having an affair with me, I regret that when they interviewed me, I denied it. But after all, I wasn't yet 20, or just. But John... Uh, and I did admit it <laughs> when they said, oh, we're coming, yes. Kristen, what really is the truth? Yes. We can't you, you print then, it. You then spilled said, the beans. Well, it was true, really. Yes. Well, and I regret doing that, of course. But John, if there had been no sexual element in this story, it would not have lived on for 25 years in the way that it has, or 26 years. Uh, is there not... Isn't the whole saga, the present saga of the film and the book, open to attacks that it is just prurient? I don't think it'll ever go away until the truth comes out. We're always going to have the press make believe and bring people that weren't even involved. I mean, it's been happening this week. There's been interviews in the press by mm. people that didn't even know Stephen and I, mm. virtually. You might have met Stephen once. But, but you know that's going to happen, and, and that's that, predictable. No, the, once the book and the, the film are out, uh, it, it, it really can't if happen. If people believe them, but then they go on <laughs> debating. John? Well, I think people will go on debating. It's, 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 it's one of those subjects that, that, that uh, will be talked of for a, a great deal of time, but I, I, I can't help feeling that the film is going to quash a great deal which, which is misunderstood. And also... Even from the people that were around at the time. I was around at the time, and I was, um, I suppose, I was about 1963, I was 23. And I don't think that I took it as seriously at that time. As, a, as perhaps one should have done. Why do, you think, a, why do you think it made such a big impact at that time? Is it because of what we were saying earlier, that in fact, it, it, you know, the 60s had begun and somehow at that stage we didn't yeah, realise that perhaps the I don't establishment... Think we, I don't think we knew exactly what was happening sociologically. And it was just, it was really, it was uh, almost stood as a metaphor for what was, what was happening in society. Um, the scandal itself, of course, the political side, is, is, is another thing. But that was the shock, wasn't it? The shock was that the establishment was susceptible, equally susceptible as the rest of the nation, to the temptations of the flesh. Well, indeed, yes. I mean, it's, it's really the first time that, that anything, as Quentin would say, sex raised its ugly head, yes, finally. I, I don't and, think uh, that's And people why. started to talk about it. But, I mean, it, I, I don't think there's any single reason. I think it's a conglomeration of, 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 of many factors that made it a, into a, a something rather extraordinary in our history. Well, you see, Stephen had to be got, because they, Stephen was, I'm afraid he was too, he, he was spying. And uh, they, they, uh, because uh, Macmillan was incompetent enough not to realize this when MI5 came to see Stephen in the beginning, um, I think that when they found this out uh, in, at the, in 63, early 63, they quickly had to get Stephen for something, but it wasn't quick, you see, because seeing they now realize that this man had been spying and they had to get him. And so they got him on a, they had to make up a whole case against him. Can I ask and you so something? it just went on for such a long Can time. Can I ask you something finally, Christine? Since um, that relationship with Stephen Ward and uh, the Profumo affair and the um, Ivanov affair and 25 years and two husbands, are there any of these men whom you have actually loved? Um, I, I, I have uh, married a couple of times and I've also lived with a few chaps. But um, um, I probably, after what I went through, I probably was too insecure emotionally to probably really love anybody. Not even Stephen Ward? Well, Stephen, I... I, I if he was still alive today, I, I would be with him. But it was not a physical relationship, which, by the way, is, of society isn't the correct way to live with someone anyway. Christine Keeler and John Hurd, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.
Sunday Dirty Den will rise from a watery grave and there'll be red noses all round with one of our favourite comedians. That's Leslie Grantham and Lenny Henry here on Wogan on Friday. Join me then. Until then, good night.